Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is number 32 quadratics of my Edexcel IGCSE exam questions per topic. And it's my second series, so I've done two uh, series. Yeah, great. Right, factorising. Uh, minus 36 is what the two numbers have to times to make. So straight away, because they have to times to make a negative, I know that one of them must be positive and one of them must be negative. It's the only way you could times to make a negative. And they're going to add to make minus 5. So that also tells me that the bigger number must be the negative one in order to make the, the sum negative. And the two numbers are minus 9 and positive 4. That does the job. So, uh, head solve, well, that means either x plus 4 equals 0, or the other bracket equals 0. Uh, sorry, the other bracket equals 0. So, x minus 9, Ooh. x minus 9 equals 0. Perfect. So, solving this equation means x equals minus 4, or x equals 9. So, we can say x equals minus 4, comma, x equals 9 is the best way of writing your answers. Beautiful. Okay, right, we're going again. So we've got minus 24. Uh, so I know, once again, the only way to multiply two numbers to make a negative, if one is positive, one is negative. And they need to add to make positive 2, which means the positive number this time is going to be the bigger one. And the two numbers are... 6 and 4, minus 4, 6 and minus 4. Okay, to solve, then either the left bracket must be 0, or the right bracket must be 0. That's the only way that two things multiplied together can equal 0, is if one of them or the other one is 0. So solving this equation, x equals minus 6, or solving this equation, x equals 4. So we can write our answers as x equals minus 6, comma, x equals 4. Beautiful. Okay, we go again, and once again, we're timesing to make a negative number, which means straight away, I can say that one of the brackets must be positive and one must be negative. And this time, they need to add to make minus two, which means the larger number is going to be the negative one. And the two numbers are seven and five. That does the job. Okay, solve it equal to zero. Well, if two things multiplied together equals zero, then either one of them equals zero or the other one equals zero. Solving this equation on the left gives us minus five, and solving this equation on the right gives us seven. So x equals minus five, comma, x equals seven are two solutions. Okay, and we are factorizing once again. This time, their times need to make a positive. Uh, which means they're either both positive or they could be both negative. Now, which is it going to be? Well, they're going to add to make a negative. So they can't both be positive because they would never add to make a negative. So I know that it must be this formation here, two negatives. They've got times to make 20, add to make minus 21, and the answers are 1 and 20. Yep, that does the job. Beautiful. Three marks. Very generous. Oh, it says solve. <laughs> okay, so always check the marks to see if you've done enough work, just in case you may have misread the question like I did. It equals 0, which means x minus 1 equals 0, or x minus 20 equals 0, which means x equals 1, or x equals 20. So we write here x equals 1, comma, x equals 20. Beautiful. Okay. Right. And now the hint for this one is it says correct to two decimal places, which means it's not going to be factorizable. We're going to be using the quadratic formula here. Now the quadratic formula is given in your formula booklet. Um, and it looks exactly like this. And it means that you can work out the solutions to any quadratic in this form, which this one perfectly is, because it's 11x squared minus 3x 
minus 5 equals 0, which means that A is 11, B is minus 3, and C is minus 5. So let's use those numbers. So we say x equals minus, minus 3, plus or minus, always in brackets, minus 3 squared, minus 4, again in brackets, 11, times by, in brackets, minus 5. You're much less likely to make mistakes if you use brackets, mainly because your calculator, actually, I'll show you exactly why in a second, uh, and then 2 times by 11, like so. Okay, uh, we go to the calculator, and we say uh, fraction button first, and then minus minus 3 is just 3, so I'm going to write just 3, plus the square root of in brackets minus 3 squared, because if you don't put the brackets there, it will give you the wrong answer. It won't understand what you're doing, and instead it will give you negative 9, but we know minus 3 squared is positive 9. Minus 4 um, times by 11. I'll write times by 11 this time. Times by minus 5. All over 2 times by 11, like so. Um, yes, I mean the bracket... A bit contradictory here. The brackets are just important for the squaring part, okay, because that is where you can make a mistake. If you don't put the brackets around the minus 3 before you square, you will make a mistake. Equals, change it so that it is uh, uh, correct to two decimal places, go back along, change that to a minus, Now this gives us x equals minus 0 0.55. Perfect. Okay, here we have a hexagon and uh, it has been labelled algebraically. And we have to show that the area of the hexagon is 40. Oh no, the area of the hexagon is 40. We have to show that this equation holds true. So that means we can't use this equation. Let's forget about it. That's the answer. We're not going to use it in order to... Uh, uh, solve this question, we are going to find it another way, and I'm going to do that by splitting the shape into two sections. Uh, I'm going to split it, which way am I going to split it? Uh, this way. You could split it that way, but we're going to go with this way now. So, uh, okay, so let's split it here. So, this region here is just 4 times 3x. Uh, base times by height or length times by width so we have 4 times 3x plus um, so this region here it's a bit trickier to work out we know this is uh, x plus 1 that's nice and easy but what are we going to multiply that by well it's going to be this distance here which is 4x minus 3 take away this part which is 4 so we're going to times it by 4x minus 3 minus 4, like that. Now that is the area, and we're told that's equal to 40, so we can set it equal to 40. Okay, so now we need to do some uh, some multiplying out. That's 12x. Uh, this is x plus 1 times by x minus 7 is equal to 40. So multiplying out this, we're going to get 4x squared we're going to get minus 7x and we're going to get plus 4x and we're going to get minus 7 is equal to 40 okay um, just running out of space I'm just going to move up here so we have in total we have a 4x squared we have a 12x minus a 7 plus a 4 and that is a total of 9x and then we have just constants, we have minus 7, and we've got 40 on the other side. So minus 7 equals 40. We're going to want to bring it all over to one side to make it equal 0. So we get this. We can then reveal to see if we got it right. And we have. So perfect. We've used the information to solve the question. 
Okay, now part B is a bit tricky uh, because uh, normally questions like this, they follow into one another. Uh, but this one actually just asks you to solve this quadratic. It doesn't say with the context of it being part of a hexagon problem. So we're just going to solve this quadratic uh, just normally. And it says that we want to solve it correct to three significant figures. So we're going to use our calculator once again. So the A term is 4, the B term is 9, and the C term is minus 47. So we can say x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So x is equal to minus 7 plus or minus the square root of... Uh, and with this square term, I'm always going to put it in brackets. So 9 squared uh, minus 4 times by a is 4 times by c is minus 47. And that's all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 4. OK, let's, let's put it in our calculator. So I hit the fraction button first, and I do minus 9 plus the square root of, in brackets, 9 squared, minus 4 times 4 times minus 47. And that's all over 2 times by 4. We press equals. We press the S to D button. And this gives us that x equals to three significant figures 2.48, comma. The other solution would be when I change the um, uh, I change the symbol from a plus to a minus. So I go all the way back here, change that to a minus, and then press this button, and we get equals minus 4.73. Perfect. Okay, the last part says find the length of the longest side of the hexagon. Well, I need to go up and I need to figure out which x value am I actually going to choose. And it has to be the positive one because the negative one wouldn't make sense as x is a, um, is a distance of the hexagon. So, the longest side, um, well, I'm not entirely sure to be honest just by looking at it. Um, so really we should check each one. So the x coordinate, uh, the x value was 2.48, uh, if I'm correct. Yep. So let's see what we get if we times that by 3. Uh, so we get 7.44. So that's 7.44. Um, let's see what we get if we, um, well, if we add 1 to it, the one on the left, then that is not going to be bigger than 7.44, so there's no point doing that. So let's just times it by 4 and minus 3. And let's see what that gives us. That gives us 6.92. So actually this one is the longest side. So we can go all the way down here and we say the longest side is 7.44. Perfect. Okay, final question. Uh, similar to the one before, we've got to show that uh, this is equal to this. So I'm going to rub that out because I don't want to use that in my answer. I just need to work out the, the total area of the lawn and the path. Okay, so um, that means we're going to need this distance here, which is 2x plus 1. And we're going to need this distance along the bottom, which is 1 plus 3x plus 1. So it's 3x plus 2. And to find the area, we would multiply these two together. And that would equal the area which we're told is, is 100. So multiplying out the brackets gives us 6x squared plus 4x plus 3x plus 2. Which gives us 6x squared plus 7x plus 2 equals 100. And then finally, we're going to want to set it equal to zero in order to solve this quadratic. So, whoops, minusing 100 from both sides gives us minus 98. And then we get to check to see if we've done it right. And we have. Beautiful. Okay, now it says calculate the area of the lawn. So this is means we need to solve the quadratic, but it is linked directly to the lawn. So, um, well, let's just give it a go and see what we get. Um... Okay, so we need to solve the quadratic. So uh, it says show your working clearly. So once again, I'm going to have to say a is equal to 6, 
B is equal to 7 and C is equal to minus 98. Uh, I'm going to use the quadratic formula, which is minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC all over 2A. And that means that we have minus 7 plus or minus the square root. And I'm always going to make sure that I write this down because uh, I need to show my working. I, I can't just give the, the answer to this question. You will get marked down if you don't show your working because it has asked clearly for that. And then 2 times a, which is 6. Okay, so we go to the calculator to do this. Uh, hit the fraction button first. And then we do uh, minus 7 plus the square root, always get into the habit of putting the square term in brackets to avoid mistakes, minus 4 times 6 times minus 98, all over 2 times 6, uh, and we get 3.5, lovely, x equals 3.5, oh, but I mean this, this obviously factorises, I didn't even notice, and I should have noticed because it didn't say give your answer to a particular degree of accuracy. It just says calculate the area exactly. Uh, but nevertheless, that's fine. We can still use the quadratic formula. There's no harm in doing that. Uh, and this one gives us minus 14 over uh, minus 14 over 3. This one needs to be rejected because uh, you can't have a negative distance. Now it says work out the area of the lawn. So the lawn, just looking at the diagram at the top, is 3x multiplied by 2x. Uh, okay, so the lawn uh, is equal to 2x multiplied by, three, uh, by 3x, which is 6x squared, which is equal to... Well, we know x is 3.5, so we just have to do 6 times 3.5 squared, and we get 73.5. Perfect. Okay, job done. Hope you enjoyed that, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.